All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm flying X-Plane on a MacBook Pro. I think I've got 16 gigs of memory in this thing, but we're gonna see how realistically we can fly, take off and fly an instrument approach back into Thomaston Airport. So, again, we're flying X-Plane 11.3. Um, so we're going to try to get this thing trimmed here to give us a nice steady climb. One, one problem with, with any of these simulators is it's really hard to compare them to a real airplane. So, um, part of it is because the stick, you know, if you, you, you can get full deflection on the, on the joystick here where you, you, you have a hard time doing that in an airplane because you've got pressure on, on the stick all the time from the air going over the, the surfaces where in the simulator, the game knows it, but the stick doesn't. So the game allows you to do some things that, you know, aren't realistic, but we're going to try to circumnavigate some of those problems and see if we can't use this as a as a practice tool for practicing instrument approaches so while we're climbing up to 3,000 feet um, we're actually headed um, out away from the airport toward the initial approach fix so I'm gonna try to keep this as short as I can but I don't want to cut any of it out because I want to try to show how realistic now right now I don't have my hands on anything um, I've got a little bit of a, a left turn tendency that I have to correct every now and then. Um, so we'll, and I don't have rudder pedals or anything. It's just strictly a joystick. Um, it does turn left and right for me to use the rudders though. So it's fairly, it's a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro is the joystick that I'm using at the moment. So while I'm climbing out here, one of the one of the problems that that I tend to have with the simulator is the trim. So when you're flying in a real airplane, you're really using the trim tab. If if you are trying to fly with the least amount of effort, you're really using the trim tab to fly the airplane because you don't really want to have to hold pressure on anything to, to try to fly because it it introduces too much too much chance for error. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna duck down where we can't see anything and we're gonna see how well we can get back over to the airport. So anyway, so like right now I'm I'm gonna try to trim this thing out and I'm, you'll notice the trim tab down at the bottom it's got a little bit of a down as far as the gauge down at the very bottom of the screen. Um, but it is not too bad. I'm, I'm, I have a hard, a really hard time getting it to, to fly with the trim tab because I, I tend to like, I just move the trim tab just a little bit. And if I leave it here, you'll notice it'll start climbing again. It, it it's like it, it has this tendency to always want to climb and it's irritating because no matter what I do to stop that it's just very crazy so so right now we are outbound and see it's it, even though I'm still I've been trimming down for ever since I started talking about trimming down and the airplane is still wanting to climb it'll it'll go into a descent and then all of a sudden it starts climbing again. It's like it, it always wants to climb. So like right now it's got a little bit of a nose down. I'm not going to touch any of the elevator. I'm going to leave it alone and now you'll notice it's going back to climbing again. It's, it's a consistent thing no matter how slow, how fast. You'll also notice that our RPM have, has climbed again. That's also another irritating thing that seems to happen on here. So now we're in this descent because I pulled the throttle back and it's decided that it needs to go into a thousand foot descent just because I reduced 100 RPM. 
So now I gotta go back and trim it the other way. But what will end up happening is we'll start climbing again here in a minute. All right, while it's doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and click over here. We're gonna go to procedures. I'm gonna select an approach. I'm gonna go down to the RNAV 30 approach. And then we'll just do vectors and we'll go ahead and activate that approach. I'm gonna click and hold the clear to get us back over here. So we're gonna be shooting Sinfo inbound. So we'll be turning back this way. Um, and so as a result, I wanna go ahead and turn outbound just a little bit because I've gotten a little tighter than I wanted to be. So, and also while I was doing that, we lost a bunch of altitude. So we got to get back to altitude. And now we're descending again, despite the fact that I haven't changed anything. So now we got to do a nose up. All right, and what you're going to be watching is this is our localizer needle vertically and then horizontally is going to be our glide slope. Um, right now the glide slope is caged. Um, we've got the localizer here. It's in VLOC. Um, so technically the glide slope should come out of cage. We'll see what happens here in a minute. and i'm descending again this is this is where it just and, and i've lost rpm all on its own so we got to get back up here to 3000 feet It's probably one of the most irritating things about trying to practice in the simulator like this is the fact that you're having to fly it so unlike an airplane that other than working your instruments and stuff, it starts to become questionable as to whether this is helping me. But so far it's not terrible, so we'll... We'll just chalk it up to shooting an approach in a very unstable airplane. All right, so we've gotten up back up close to our altitude. So what we're going to do now is we're going to turn. So the three zero is where we want to be. That that's going to be our localizer that we're actually going to be flying. Yeah, I'm just sending. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over here. This is just. We're going to turn about a west heading here. And so what this is going to do. Oh, come on. Go into 2,000 foot ascent and didn't hardly do anything but roll out. One thing it does is makes you very uh, alert as to all the mistakes you're making because it's very unforgiving. If my airplane actually flew like this, I don't think I would fly it very often. All right, so I'm going to trim down a little bit. I'm going to pull back a little bit on the RPM. In fact, I'm going to pull back to about 2200. We'll see how long it stays at 2200. All right, so what we're looking for right now is this vertical needle. We're going to be crossing back across our, our approach here. 
And so we're, we're waiting for, in fact, I need to turn back to the left a little bit. I got too, too distracted with my altitude thing. So we'll just turn back around here to say a 24. What, what we're looking for is we want to hold our altitude at 3000 and we want to wait for this vertical needle right here to start coming in. And as soon as it starts to move, we need to start rolling out into our three zero angle or our direction because we're not going to have so see it started to swing and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start turning around here to three zero because it won't take it a second to go swing right through our localizer we're going to try to hold our altitude and this is where i get frustrated with the simulator so I turn a little too much so we got to turn back so you basically chase the needle so we're a little to the right of course so we're gonna fly to the left of course just for a second we're gonna but we're now past info so we can come down to two, 2200 feet so we're going to get on our localizer because we're getting pretty close to it so we're going to stay on the localizer but we're going to come down to 2200 feet so we're going to try to stay on three zero come down to 2200 feet and now what we're doing is we're looking for Pumo and you'll notice the outer marker light will go off here in a second. And that'll indicate that we've gotten to Pumo. And at that point, you should then start seeing the glide slope, which is the horizontal needle. You'll start seeing the glide slope come into play. And then what we're gonna try to do, if we can get this thing, all right, so we're at 2,200 feet. So we're gonna try to stop that descent and hang out right here we're getting to a little bit to the left of course so we're going to straighten that out a little bit and there and try to hold our so I'm using the trim tab to try to get this thing where I want it to be so we're at 20 2200 now you see the glide slope has started to come in we're also getting a little to the left of our course so we're going to chase that needle to the right a little bit but we want to make very minor changes now all right so the glide slope has started coming in but we we're not quite the pumo we're going to get our needle back in the center for our localizer we're going to start turning back to the left just a little bit because we don't want to wait too long all right, so now we're just going to let it sit right there. We're a little to the left, and we're a little to the right on our DG down there. So we're going to kind of let it meet in the middle. I've started descending again, so i got to get that back to 22. So we'll get back up here to 2,200 feet. So the localizer is looking good. The glide slope is starting to come in. So you can see the horizontal needle is starting to, to come alive. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to try to keep all of this stuff in the middle. So we want to keep the localizers looking good. The airport's dead ahead. All right, so now the, lo the glide slope's coming in. So what I want to do is I want to start a about a 600 foot descent. And so we're going to start descending and we're going to try. So there was Pumo, or you saw the lights going off there. And so now what we're going to try to do is we're going to use our throttle to try to get it, keep our glide slope. But I pulled off and nothing happened, so to the left of course a little bit I'm a lot to the left of course 
I have a hard time because I'm really having to fly the airplane a lot more than I would normally do. So we're still, so now what we're doing is we're trying to keep our descent so that we're keeping that needle in the middle. We want both those needles to stay as close to the middle as possible. And usually that's about a 600 foot or so descent. So now I'm to the left, of course, so I need to correct that a little bit. So we'll just put a little bit of an angle in here. We don't want too much. We're looking for 998 feet. And at 998 feet, we should be 200 feet off the ground and lined up with the runway. I wish I could get the trim to do its thing. All right, so now we're getting a little below and to the left or to the right, of course. Now we're too high. This is not a very good approach, but given the fact that, all right, so right there we should be at minimum. So if I pull up, there's the runway. So the question is, is can you fly X-Plane to practice your instrument approach? The uh, obvious answer is yes, you can. Um, you just are probably going to have to spend a little bit of time practicing flying the airplane first um, to figure out the nuances and getting it trimmed right. Because, I mean, obviously you could use the autopilot to do it, but that's not much in the way of practicing. So. I think I'm going to try to continue to practice flying the airplane a little bit until I get where I can control it a little better because right now I'm having a, a pretty good time trying to keep the speed right because my throttle keeps changing. My airspeed is very erratic. I can go from a 2,000 foot ascent to a 2,000 foot descent with a very minimal amount of change in the in my controls. So that's extremely irritating um and i i can honestly say that you know i, I have i've had the same problem with pretty much every simulator that i've tried um but x-plane has is gotten a little bit better than it used to be but it's still um a, a long way from flying like an actual airplane at least in my opinion it is and you know i've had pilot friends fly too that that are, have the same feeling when they get through flying it but I want to give it a few more shots and maybe I'll do another video uh, once I get a little better at it and we'll see what the difference is.